So we all know the good old Abyss usage statistics, where we can see just how popular some of the characters are, but I've always wondered why some of the characters end up getting barely used in teams. And so in this video, I want to take a closer look at some of the most unpopular units in the game and talk about their actual power level and viability in the game. I'm actually surprised to see Yinjin barely getting any love in Genshin. She's the newest Geo character in the game, since in Sumeru we got a fat zero of them. And I know Geo as an element hasn't always been that super popular, although I am hoping this will get addressed during Fontaine cycle. But okay, what's exactly wrong with her? And why is no one playing her? Well, it's really just a case of being an extremely niche character. Back when she first got released, the first unit she immediately got compared to was Benny Boy. And I admit it, I was also one of those content creators who did it. Benny's just such a strong universal attack booster, who also provides healing and at of particles, while Yunjin can only provide a damage buff to characters who use normal attacks, which means it's only really good if it's also their main source of damage. And sure, she also has a temporary shield that can absorb a hit or two, similar to Beto's skill, but ultimately, she's a normal attack damage booster. But the thing is, Yunjin basically acts as a sub-damage dealer. The way her buff works is identical to Shenhe's. Basically, it's like adding a separate amount of damage. So if Yunjin provides additional damage that skills with her defense, in order for that character to deal a lot better damage, they need to have good critical damage and elemental damage bonus. Honestly, she's still pretty good with Yoimiya, Ayato and Noel, although she's probably best with the first two I mentioned, especially with Yoimiya if you can get Yunjin to C6, which turns Yoimiya into a fun damage dealer that just keeps shooting arrows like a machine gun. I think part of Yunjin's problem is that you need to make sure she has enough energy recharge, because often you might run her as the only Geo character, and relying on her buff from her burst is not always super fun when you switch to her and you see it's not ready yet. Still, I think that while Yunjin is unpopular, she still has some great future proofing built into her, since if Horivers decides to release new physical or elemental damage dealers to have good normal attacks, Yunjin is gonna be the first unit I will want to use with them. Now before we get to the next character, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Electronic Arts, The Lord of the Rings, Heroes of Middle-Earth. In this new free mobile RPG for iOS and Android, you get to explore the most legendary stories of Tolkien's work as well as brand new ones. Now, I'm a huge nerd when it comes to The Lord of the Rings. I even have a dedicated shelf, so this game is right up my alley. And what I love about the game are the characters. You can collect tons of iconic heroes and villains like Gimli and Legolas, and you can use their cool team-up abilities to make huge impact in battle. What's even better, new characters are constantly introduced, so you can prepare for legendary heroes famous for their epic achievements. Obtain these characters monthly and use them in places like legendary or marquee adventures. What's also amazing is that this game tells its own first-of-a-kind storyline, allowing you to explore all facets of Tolkien's world, relive fan-favorite moments, as well as explore brand new battles to fix the timeline by traveling across many well-known Middle-earth locations, like visiting the Elves of Rivendell or fighting the Nazgul at Weathertop. So make sure to download The Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle-earth for free, and you can do this by using my link in the description or by scanning the QR code, and in this way you'll also help support my channel. The life of being a budget Alhatham is a tough one. I mean, not only did Kavi have a rough time along with Baiju when their banner revenue got revealed, but most of us expected him to be budget Nilo, since his main shtick is that he can also prematurely detonate the Dendro course on the ground and deal additional damage by doing so. But in reality, you don't get to trigger those instant bloom explosions that often. The damage isn't even close to Nilo's bountiful blooms, and overall, it seems like Hoyo made him with good intentions, but the execution was different, because the way you can use him with pretty decent results is by just activating his burst, getting the Dendro infusion, and acting as a Dendro driver for Hyperbloom, Burgeon, and ironically enough, Nilo Bloom comps. And that's why a lot of people call him Budget Alhatham. Kave can be a decent Dendro driver for many Dendro comps, but don't expect to see the same damage numbers that Alhatham can put out. Although, you might be thinking, Kave does get to detonate Dendro cores more often with his final constellation, which is nice if I'm being honest. However, this also means he loses out on the potential to remain as a decent Dendro driver, since if he detonates the cores, that means other characters want to create Hyperblooms or Virgin will have a hard time with this. So it's like a dilemma. If he activates C6 on Kave, are you fine with the idea he becomes a greedy Dendro driver who explodes a lot more Dendro cores and deals more damage as it was intended for him, but in exchange he becomes a lackluster Dendro driver? I think in the grand scheme of things, this isn't really a big deal. I myself enjoy using him in teams like Hyperfridge or Virgin. He works pretty well with Toma, and the fact he can heal himself from Dendro explosions is a nice little bonus that makes him a bit more interesting. If you've been playing Genshin since the start, you might remember this Popsicle Boy as one of the units in the national team. However, it didn't take long for people to replace him with Sucrose, who later on got replaced by Kazuha or Raiden Shogun. I kinda feel sad that Chongyun is an unpopular character because, in my opinion, he has one of the most satisfying 4-star bursts in the game and from time to time, I put him into my teams to relive the nostalgic early days of Genshin. But I get it, his entire kit is all over the place. Which is weird because the big 5 units are all from 1.0, so it almost feels like an insult he couldn't join the group 
group of powerful 4-star friends. Still, the reason why his skit is so inconsistent mainly has to do with his skill. Cryo Infusion granted to melee damage dealers is just not that relevant. Maybe aside from that one time Cryo Zhongli became a thing thanks to Shenha. But even looking at his constellations, the first one is a joke. Chong Yun's normal attacks are slow and weak, so unless you just want to play him this way, it's not relevant. But then we have C2, which reduces everyone's cooldowns by 15% if they use their abilities inside Chong Boy's skill field, which is an incredibly rare buff that only C6 Raiden and Animal Resonance can provide. And then every other constellation after is decent but nothing to write home about, since even if C6 gives him a pretty massive damage boost to his burst, performing a quad melt is not that easy or practical. But I did mention Shenha before. Thanks to her, Chong Yun actually got a bit of a spotlight in mono cryo teams, although unloading all of those icy quills can still be a challenge or even unnecessary if you want to utilize his cryo infusion. Still, I enjoy using Chong Yun from time to time, especially if I see those annoying hydro or even pyro heralds. So, Klee got her new fancy costume. Did that help boost her usage rate? I think you and I both know the answer. It's kind of funny to think that Klee is basically sitting at the bottom out of all 5-star characters in terms of her usage popularity, and yet, a ton of people pulled for her back when she first got released in 1.0. And I get it, this was back when Genshin exploded in popularity, so everyone just opened up their wallets and threw their money at the game. I remember those days when I was eagerly climbing the walls around Mondstadt and collecting every single Philanemo mushroom. In fact, I even have C2 Klee because I gave in to the pressure from other content creators showcasing crazy damage numbers, thanks to that defense stretch she provides from C2. Still, these days, I only use her if my main shielder isn't busy on the other team, because one of the biggest complaints players have about her is the clunky playstyle. Not only do you constantly run out of stamina when using her charge attacks, but her charge attack hitbox is pretty small, so you need to stand near the enemies and also make sure to dodge if there's no shielder in the team. Also, vaping her attacks is kinda hard, although we did see a ton of new Hydro characters come out since her debut, so I still try to play her around her vape damage whenever I can. But yeah, Klee is, well, Klee, no matter how you look at it. She is one of the oldest featured units in the game, and characters like Hu Tao or even Yoimiya simply took it over when it came to deciding on the next pyro character people want to play with. But to me personally, she's like a remnant of the early days. And while she's not my first choice when it comes to clearing the abyss with full stars, I often put her into my teams if I want to just have a blast when exploring the open world. Now, I want to talk about Ning Wang because I've seen quite a lot of comments about her in my videos. It seems that even if she has an extremely low usage rate, those who are dedicated to her are spreading the gospel about her with a strong conviction. But anyway, why is nobody playing Ning Wang? Well, for one, she needs specific units to shine, which is perfectly fine because a lot of units like Hu Tao need Yelan or Xing Chou to shine. However, she also specializes in dealing single target damage, even if it looks like a lot of missiles are flying around from her burst. And with C1, her normal attacks can deal AoE damage. But in reality, she mostly relies on skill and burst. We have a ton of single target damage dealers, so it's natural people would gravitate towards others than the Geo Queen herself. But there's something about her that feels really satisfying. Pulling off that whole combo with a skill and burst, especially if the burst has a C6 bonus, is really fun. And while she does have a really bad base attack, you can fix it with good old Benny Boy. So maybe if we get more Geo units that boost damage, she can resurface in the future and more people can appreciate her playstyle. But yeah, these are some of the unpopular characters I wanted to talk about. I know there's some popular, unpopular characters I could have talked about like Shinyan or Dory, but other great content creators have covered them. Also, I wanted to talk in this video about Aloy, but then I googled and saw that you can no longer obtain her? Like literally, new players will never have Aloy. And I'm not sure how I feel about this, since clearly, now that those of us who have Aloy, we can brag how busted she is and why she has some of the best constellations in the game. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, as always, you can help me out immensely by just pressing the like button and subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to check out today's sponsor by using my link in the description. You will help my channel a ton by doing this. Thanks for watching and see you next time.